Greetings. This is Principal Kefele, and welcome to another edition of Message to the Youth. You know, I haven't made one of these videos in a long time. I've made over 200 of them, but with the pandemic, I just haven't gotten to it. But today is February 6, 2021. We're in the midst of Black History Month 2021, and I decided let me share a little Black history with the young people of America. So I want to talk to you today about five black inventors. There, there are far more. There, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of black inventors. But I want to highlight five from back in the 1800s or the early 1900s, right around that period. And maybe later I'll do another video of another five, and maybe later on another five. But right now I want to highlight these five. And these are five who really, their inventions, they, they changed the world. Let's jump into it. The first one, his name is Andrew Beard. Once again, Andrew Beard. And he invented something called the Jenny Coupler. Once again, the Jenny Coupler. Let me explain. Be before his invention, think about a train. A train is, is comprised of several different cars, right? Cars that, of, a, of a longer train. But you have to couple them together in order for them all to move together simultaneously with, with the train itself, the, the locomotive pulling the entire train. So in order to join them together before Andrew Beard's invention, you have a car that would back up into another car. And at the end of each car, there was this, this huge iron ring. So they back up the cars into each other so that the two rings were aligned. And now once they were aligned, or at least near alignment, a person, usually a man, would stand in between them. So one leg on one car and the other leg on the other at the edge. And then they'd back it up precisely where they were lined up. And then he would drop an iron pin, a heavy pin, into the two rings to join the two cars together. Now, the problem with that was, as the, car, as the locomotive is backing up, you can't really see precisely where the, where the point is where they're exactly aligned. So they may back up a little further than need be. And what happened, a lot of times the, the person could lose a limb, such as an arm, such as a leg. And that's what happened with Andrew Beard. Coincidentally, his one of his legs was crushed, so he lost a leg. But that motivated him to come up with an invention to prevent that. So he came up with the coupler. So you know how car trains now, you've all seen it, how you back up, the coupler will meet each other, go a little bit past, and then lock in. That was called the Jenny Coupler, the automatic coupler system, which is what he invented. So now you don't have to have a human being stand between two different cars. You just have the, the train back up, the, back the car, one car to another, and then the coupler will lock. And now they're locked together. That was invented by, again, an African-American inventor by the name of Andrew Beard. Secondly, I want to talk to you about Granville T. Woods. Once again, Granville T. Woods. He invented the electric railway system, known as the third rail. And what that is, think about subways in some of your big cities, those underground trains, right? Well, in order for them to run, they run on electricity. The, there, there are two rails on a train track, but then there's a third rail that's electric. It's called the third rail. That's the electric rail. That's the rail that gives the train power to move, electricity. Well, Granville T. Woods invented the third rail, the electric railway system, which allows tr underground trains to be able to move about, move about a city, move about a town, um, powered by electricity because of this third rail. But in addition to that, think about you got trains, big city like New York, which is near me. I'm in Jersey. You got trains all over the place, all over the place moving. And in and, and some cases, they'll, 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 they'll intersect tracks will intersect with one another. So trains could, could literally go across other tracks where trains are coming from other directions. So there has to be a system to, to prevent the trains from crashing into one another. Well, Granville T. Woods came up with that system, which was called the induction telegraph system. Once again, the induction telegraph system, which was essentially somebody in a, in a central location controlling the movement of the trains. Right. So 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 communication between the 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 uh, the dispatcher, we'll, we'll call it, and the person that's 
driving the train, the conductor. So now they, they were able to prevent collisions from occurring because of this system. If that system wasn't in place, then trains could collide at any time, right? So Granville T. Woods came up with that system of the third rail. He invented um, he, he he invented a, a lot of things in his in his time of of, of adulthood in, in terms of just being an inventor. I'm going to spend come back on another video and talk about some of the other inventions that he came up with beyond the third rail and the telegraph induction system. Next is Frederick McKinley Jones. Think about when you go to the supermarket, you have the you have the frozen food section. So those are the foods that have to remain cold have to remain frozen or they will spoil quickly. Well, in order for it to remain it remain frozen, it's got to arrive frozen. It's got to arrive to the store frozen before you or your family goes and purchases it. So Frederick McKinley Jones, he looked at the truck and saw that the truck couldn't keep food frozen. So that, so, so before his invention, they would put a big block of ice or, or several blocks of ice in a truck in, in, in terms of the trailer to keep the the food cold so it wouldn't so, so, so to, to keep it to keep it fresh right so so now once the ice melted then the trucks that those trailers can get very hot particularly during the summer months so he came up with you may have seen on the front of those trailers of, in terms of those tractor trailer trucks you may have seen those little refrigerators on the outside of the front of them well, that's that's the that's the refrigeration system. So he came up with the refrigerated truck, right? So now it's got the refrigeration system right at the front. So you see the fan portion in the front of the train, and then the refrigeration portion is on the inside. I shouldn't say train, but truck. The inside of the truck, and now that's keeping the food cold or frozen for the entire time that it's in the truck, right? So the refrigerated truck, but then also the refrigerated uh, plane the refrigerated um, um, boat, he came up with all of that, right? So the refrigeration system, the transportation, that's Frederick McKinley Jones. Next, Elijah McCoy. Let's go back to the train. The train has a, the, the locomotive has an engine and all engines have to be lubricated, right? If, if, if the movable parts of an engine are not lubricated, then it'll cause friction and, uh, and, and uh, ultimately damage to the uh, the locomotive, to the engine of the locomotive. So it won't be able to run. So it's gotta be lubricated, it's gotta be oiled at all times. So before Elijah McCoy's invention, what would happen was trains would travel X number of, um, of, of miles, and then once all the parts were, were unlubricated, right, and, and running the risk of damage, then somebody they would stop the train. Workers would climb onto the, the the locomotive to the engine area and literally grease down all the movable parts. They would grease it down, right? And once everything was greased down, then they could travel for a, another X number of miles, right? And then once again, all the oil was was worn um, was worn away. Then they got to go back and lubricate the engine again. So it became tedious, time consuming that they had to keep on greasing down the movable parts of an engine. So Elijah McCoy came up with the automatic lubrication system, which meant that there was a cup that contained oil with a hole at the bottom, and then the oil would, would gradually drip from the cup and just kind of flow onto the movable parts of an engine. This became known as the drip cup but it also became known as the real McCoy, right? So if you ever heard the expression, the real McCoy, that's where it comes from, this black inventor, Elijah McCoy. So now with that invention, now you think about a car, you don't have to have people drive a car and then you stop and you grease the engine down. Once the oil runs out, you get your oil change. So every three, 4,000 miles, you get your oil change. But that's because of Elijah McCoy, see? With that initial invention of the drip cup the real McCoy. And then my final inventor, my fifth, is um, Lewis Latimer. Lewis Latimer was, was an individual who worked along with Thomas Edison who invented the first light bulb, but it didn't do what it was supposed to do, meaning burn for a long period of time, glow for a long period of time. It would kind of flicker out. So, it, so his, his assistant, Lewis Latimer, young African-American man at the time, 
he came up with carbon thread filament. He said to Thomas Edison, allow me to put a little wiring into the bulb called carbon thread filament, and that will allow, allow it to sustain its glow, meaning to glow for a long period of time. So he went on and did it. He insert, inserted the carbon thread filament. Now the bulb glowed for long periods of time. So then he went on and wrote the first textbook on electrical lighting ever written in America. But from there, the word was out about his work. And cities at that time were, were not lit through electrical lighting. They were using gas lighting. So now cities reached out to Lewis Latimer to come to their respective cities, meaning places like New York, places like Philadelphia, places like Washington, D.C., places like Montreal, Canada, and places like London, England. They reached out to Lewis Latimer to, to, to let them know that they wanted to install electrical lighting and for him to supervise the installation of electrical lighting. So when you see electrical lighting on any street, where you live, big city, wherever it is, that's all an outgrowth of this inventor, this African-American inventor, Lewis Latimer. So I gave you five inventors, Andrew Beard, Granville T. Woods, Frederick McKinley Jones, Elijah McCoy, and Lewis Latimer. Go on and Google them and learn more about them because there's so much to know about them or, you, or, or there are also books that you can get on Amazon about them. But learn more about them. Do your own independent research and learn about other black inventors. And then hopefully I'll come back on and do another video with maybe five more. But with that said, again, it's February 6, 2021. We're in the midst of Black History Month. And I've shared with you just a little smidgen of black history. Again, this is Principal Kefele. Thank you. Peace.